Okay, we are live. Uh, let's see what we got here. Almost two hours late. Better late than never, they say. At least I think that's what they say. I'm never there on time to hear it. Okay. Um, all right, let me start sharing my screen here. There we go. Got Photoshop pulled up. I'm just looking at, here's a, a sketch that um, I brought in. I've been playing with a dip pen lately. And um, still getting the hang of it. As you can see, the page is kind of rippled. I'm too, uh, perhaps too aggressive with it, or we're not using the right type of materials. But so I was playing with this idea. You know, these little weird-looking tank things coming out of the water. Um, here's another one. Not quite there. You know, another strange tank looking thing. Uh, what else do we have? Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Oh, we already did that. That was the Colonel, uh, Colonel Chicken, Colonel McChickens. Uh, you know, actually looking through here, I've got to catch up on my scanning. I've got a little um, little hand uh, handheld sketchbook, little pocket sketchbook that I use, and then um, also some uh, what's the word? Let's see how do I do this? Oh boy, this did something wrong. Give me one second. I need to sort these by date. Here we go. And so we'll close this out. Make a new file. We'll go uh, 600 DPI. Drop this guy in there. There we go. <clears throat> I think I will play with this one. It's funny, you know, uh, doing that kind of warpage of the uh, the horizon, you know, in such an extreme way. You know, when you look at it as a thumbnail, it looks really wrong. But um, I'm curious if we can bend the rules. We shall see. We shall see. I might be tempted to straighten that out. Okay, if you've got anything to say, feel free to drop that in the chat. I'm just going to start messing around with this thing. Go grab this and separate it. We'll make it its, its own uh, uh, layer. And so we'll hide the original. And um, I think I'll just go, we'll do control T. We could start with just, you know, hold control and start to warp that, these corners until this edge starts to look a little bit uh, more reasonable. However, I think we're going to have to go to warp, pull that in. You know, the trouble is, though, when you've got like a, <laughs> I want to call this a perspective issue. It's really not a perspective issue. Uh, I mean, it is, I suppose, technically speaking. Um, but uh, we're well aware from the beginning that we were, uh, I'm using we as if you guys are somehow culpable in my mistakes. I, I did this. 
as a choice um, to make it extreme. But I didn't do that with everything, right? So just warping the whole image doesn't um, make it convincing, right? Because some, maybe some of the other things that I did to compensate, for example, if I'm looking at this, you know, these guys are all kind of emanating out of a central point, right? And so just to warp the whole image kind of throws that off just so that we get one smooth arc here. And um, I don't see it, particularly in this character right here, I don't know that that's any better than the original. So I'm actually going to just grab the original. Why not? This is my show. Do whatever I want. And I can tell you what, I I don't want to use the polygon tool. So that's going to change. We're going to go to lasso. Lasso is far superior because you can use it like the, the uh, polygon tool. But you can also get nice smooth arcs quickly rather than trying to, you know, go from point to point. Okay. Uh, let's we'll go smooth that a little bit there. Grab that. That's fine. Control Shift C, Control Shift V. Then I'll bring in my uh, what I had here before, and I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start separating some items here. So I'm gonna take this. Uh, let's go here. Grab all of that. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Nope. There we go. And I'm just going to extend this. Need a new layer. Extend that into there. Uh, actually, let's merge this down. We'll work on the one that we just copied. Extend this over. Um, really, I could just do a content aware fill, which I probably will, but the reason I'm not doing that quite yet is this edge right here, because it'll try to match that black edge. So I'm going to cut that out, and then now we'll do Shift F5, content aware. So I'm just going to look around, and it's going to try to just stamp some things into there we got dino blaster in the chat welcome 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 dino blaster says very cool perspective thank you um excuse me this will work i will go to the smudge brush and just kind of rough this up a little bit so that it's not you know it's not following the uh, content aware motif too closely. Okay, um, this could probably get next. It's okay to have some kind of stray lines in there, but. Um, as I tend to say, you, know, you have to decide what a mark means on the, on the canvas. And um, your content aware fill doesn't care. It just tries to match things up. So let's see if we can bring this guy back in. Well, uh, well we, nah. I'm thinking about making him a smart object, but you know the problem with that is that he'll... Uh, He'll just squander it. So let's see if we can maintain. So we got that horizon. And we got these guys coming in. These guys are going to get shifted over. Um, this guy might get shifted over. But I want to at least match. 
So if I'm looking at, say, the center of this world, I want this, uh, you know, his plumb line to go down to the core, and this guy's plumb line to go down to the core, and I uh, get that to match up. That's probably good there, at least for now. We'll mask out that edge and then uh, rinse and repeat. So let's actually, let's just try to speed this up here. We don't need to be, you don't need to be super um, clean with all this. We could just take these guys here. Control Shift C, Control V, grab these guys. And it, um, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're still working with uh, black and white. And so what <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'll, uh, I'll Control click all these layers here, and we're going to hide them all. Then we'll go back to our um, little background layer that we made. So we'll just call that uh, BG Drawing so that it's less confusing. And we'll do Shift F5. I should fill all that in. Yeah. Roughly. We might have to adjust it. Oh, excuse me. Never hold back a sneeze. I don't know why. I've been told that, but I couldn't tell you why. Okay, um, so if we go to the smudge brush tool, we can just drag some of this over. Um, I'm just going to continue some of these. Edges here. Most of this stuff is going to get covered up anyway, so we're not too worried about it. Um, that is definitely borrowing from somewhere that's got machine parts so we're we're gonna undo that and if i recall correctly i was particularly disappointed in my inking around here i just got put too much black in and i couldn't um i you know couldn't pull it out it's permanent so I had to commit to it and uh, figure out how to make it work. And I think I, I had a friend who used to do, uh, may still do, inking for um, for comic books. And I think he called that spotting. When you mess up an area, so you just fill it in with black. <laughs> um, I think that was the term he used. If we have any old... Any old guard comic book people, fill me in. Or correct me on that one. Okay, but uh, I am going to real quick address some of those mistakes. I, I'm not going to go too heavy into this because I might end up covering this up. And as it goes, um, I end up painting over things anyway. But if it bothers me, I try to fix it. That's how things get done. Um, yeah, I kind of want this to be like a shoreline. And I want some lines, some line work to be able to follow, you know. Um, I probably would come back in here and reinforce some of that with darker lines. But for now, we're going to say this is good. Uh, let me... I suppose we could extend that. Do we want to extend that? Might not be really even necessary again because we're just going to paint over it, but... Whatever, we'll put it there. All right, so we'll bring all these things back in. And then we'll start adjusting them. So this guy, I, you know, obviously that's got to be up like that. Maybe a little less of an extreme 
curve. Um, how high do I want this to be? Because we're thinking about these things uh, both, you know, technically in perspective, but really, frankly, graphic, graphically is what is more important here because, um, I mean, are we kidding ourselves? Is perspective really that important to us? It's only important enough to sell the um, kind of extreme ridiculousness of what we're throwing together here. So to whatever uh, purposes it serves, that's what it can do for us. And I almost started painting. I started painting on that, but I'm on this layer right now, so don't do that, Eric. Let's try to keep this relatively clean. All right, so the next one is this guy. Okay, and he got, he got a little washed out in the original anyway. Not that worried about him. We'll move him up, I think. Because, uh... Seems to be, in terms of the arc here, like the arcs of these, uh, those uh, lines, he should be closer to the horizon. You know. uh, these guys, just pull them over a little bit the, it, they feel like they're too like in tandem with this guy like there's this line that runs like an equator that runs around the sphere here so I'm, I want to offset them I'm covering up anything see you know I just said that we just we just painted that and now I'm covering it up it's a self-fulfilling prophecy You can't predict something and then be at the steering wheel and say, look, I told you it would happen. Obviously. Um, let me just put a mask on this. I'll just clean up that edge because that might actually just be easier than, uh, you know, than trying to fix all that. And some of this, I think I'll flatten out a little, a little bit. Again, you know, the curvature on these is partly what's giving us information about um, their place in space and their perspective. Okay, this guy as well. So let's bring um, this one back in while we're aligning this one. So that... Uh, So that we have that as a point of reference. Okay, do I want it up higher? I could set this to multiply and then we can, you know, kind of move it around more freely without it covering up the background. Um, do I want it higher? Do I want it lower? Before I adjust the, you know, the angle and the lines. I think it partly depends. So again, thinking about this graphically, like where does your eye bounce around in the scene? And if we make it too linear, um, then there's you know there's a clear line that you follow and it's uninteresting. I would say I, my temptation is to put them down here in the corner, but then I'm also kind of feeling like doing that leaves this really bare here. And maybe we do need some space, you know, some open space in the scene, but maybe, you know, I feel like putting it here starts to frame that background with like these mountains and palm trees and stuff. You know, I would have to adjust the, you know, the angles.
Yeah, I kind of like that framing. We'll just leave it there. No, we won't. We'll slide this down just a little. Just a little. We may even need to, you know, cut it into two pieces here. So we take this. I feel like this is too too curved. So we might need to flatten this out a little bit more. There we go. Good enough, good enough for now. All right, so now I'm gonna do a new layer. I'm just gonna start painting over this to clean some of these things up. And uh, some of the things that I'm gonna be looking at here are like the light on these rivets and stuff. Again, um, you know, playing with uh, uh, a dip pen I'm kind of exploring, uh, I'm trying to do it in a fairly uh, free, explorative way. Like I'm, I'm, I probably should just watch some tutorials and go for it. But I've more or less got in mind artists whose work I really like. And I'm thinking that's, you know, kind of the quality of line work that I'm going for and um, also just all my old habits and ways of doing things um, you know old habits die hard so I don't know that I will um, be uh, getting too proper with it I don't know, hearing myself talk, I'm like, yeah, you really need to just take a course on it. You know, or like, watch some YouTube videos or something. Spend some time actually doing that medium justice. But all that to say, um, making some mistakes, uh, you know, I, I will readily admit to that, that I've gone really heavy on these rivets, for example. Um, and in terms of the light quality, that's really not necessary to, to have, to have done what I have done here. I do want to show the curvature of the, uh, of the form that the rivets sit on, and so the shadow helps to do that. But I think I took it too far. Okay. Okay, I don't want to noodle too much with that. Um, what do we need here? A line or two there. This area right here, I want to clean up. Like I had this part in shadow. That was the idea. It was at the back of the tank is in shadow. But then it's kind of emerging from the water. So I want to have... Um, do that well which would mean kind of having this uh, 
partly submerged there. All right, then I want to have these tracks disturbing all that. I need to have the water kind of run into where the, the tracks um, are coming in. Um, all right, what else? This got a little convoluted, unclear. Could clean up some of these. So one of my kiddos I got this book from the library from Swan Lake. It's a Swan Lake uh, book that's got like the little buttons you pressed, you know, to, to play the music. And she's been jamming out on that and then wanted to watch the... Uh, the ballet, you know, like see the real deal. And so we've uh, been on the Swan Lake kick. So anyway, that's been, that is in my head right now, just, just on repeat. I suppose there are worse things, you know, like anything popular today. <laughs> spoken as a true old man <clears throat> I'm not old I just feel like it Um, let's see here. There might be a couple of angles I want to fix. You know, a couple of areas of light and dark that I felt like I messed up on the, in the drawing phase. Um, but I think generally what I'm headed towards here will be, um, Just starting to add a bunch of value, mid-tones. Get this thing. Get this thing rolling into a more uh, painterly design and less of a uh, sketch. Telling you, Swan Lake. I am trying my hardest not to uh, 
not to share with you music in my head. Is that what composers feel like? Is that why they do it? Because they just can't, can't not share it. It's just like eking its way out of your brain. I've got a song inside you gotta share with the world. Grab another layer of black here to throw on a line. I guess that'll work. Okay, I was talking about value. Let's do it. So let's just do, we'll do a new layer. We'll go multiply, go with a midtone. And. I'm thinking, how do I want to align, you know, uh, how do I want to segment um, this image, right? So I've already got this, like, dark area in the center here, you know, that's supposed to be the sand, you know, and then you got the water behind that, and then it the sun is clearly like over that way, right? So the light is shining like this, right? And then of course the, the background here, I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to go too far with that. And then we could throw in a sky here, you know, that would, Maybe act as a mid-ground. Let these, let these guys, you know, shine brightly off of a mid-ground background. And just the way that I'm doing this with applying light pressure, um, you know, I might have rather just filled that in, you can see. Do I want these to be dark up here? Like they're in shadow? Dunno. Dunno. We'll figure it out. Alright, so then do we want to increase the shadow? on our um, I'm gonna call them figures but you know you know they're tanks um, on our subject so that we're increasing the um, contrast here
right, I gotta take a step back, have a look at this, maybe we'll clean that edge up a little bit there. And let's apply that, and then let's bring it back in here. I think maybe this edge needs to change here, like if we bring all this in. Not sure, just thinking. How do we make this, you know, look like a... Uh, cohesive world, weird as it is. It seems like this should diminish back here, as in get smaller diminution, right, as it goes back in space. And we're pushing this perspective um, to very weird places. So how do we pull that off? Okay, and then we've got these. The ocean is this bright white. Does it need to be? Uh, or should it be? Should that be a darker value? Questions. Questions that need answers. Do we want to reintroduce that there? Get those. Get these guys on like a little sandbar. Sandbar is it? That's not even the right term. Like, are they on the shore or are they not? Are they coming out of the water? I did kind of like that. Bring that up just a little bit further. Ah, wee wee. And then back here, this was supposed to be um, well, like his treads as he's coming up on the shore, but it ended up deciding that it was going to be water. And, um, you know, can't be that indecisive with, uh, with pen and ink. Without paying the price, at least. OK. 
Okay. Um, get our lights here. And I think we need to clean some of this up. And give it some differentiation. Delineate it from those puddles down there. So go a little bit darker maybe. Just a skosh. And then maybe we should push this behind it a little darker too. We'll come back in, come back in on that. <sighs> okay, do we want these to be just light? going for that dark, you know, shadow, like there's something being cast on them. And maybe we change the angle a little bit, like we did on that other one just now, so that they're not exactly the same. And I can't remember what I was doing here. I think I was trying to make this like a hatch or something. And then I didn't, didn't end up liking those rivets. I remember putting those rivets on there and thinking, oh man, that was dumb. And now I'm stuck with it. But now that we're in digital, we are no longer stuck with it. <laughs> I'm also thinking here that I, I want to be careful not to betray the whimsical nature of this thing, you know? Make it too uh, thought out, clean. There's something, I think, kind of special to it being messy and weird. Wobbly lines and stuff like that, you know.
So this I'm going to have to look up, but I'm pretty sure when you cast a shadow on water, what ends up happening is you uh, you see what's on the other side. That is, the color, the light that you're seeing on water is the reflection on the surface. And when you cast a shadow on it, you don't have that reflection, you don't have that reflected light. And so what you're seeing is whatever is underneath the water. So in this case, if it's like, uh, you know, uh, you know, you might see more rocks and um, mud and, you know, murkiness. Of course, this tank just rolled through it, so that would ex um, just kind of make it a big mess. Again, with keeping the kind of the essential character, like this line is not perfect, right? And if I clean that up too much, it might end up making it uh, less interesting, less appealing. Couldn't possibly make this less appealing. You've already done that yourself. <clears throat> All right. Um, oh, what do we need? We can look at this and just extend some of these things, clean up some of the, you know, the obvious uh, problems here. Cast some shadows from things that are not. Uh, in frame, but to make it appear as if you know there is more going on if you keep extending around. Um, we don't have any shadow on this side, you know. Like, should this should the shadows be longer because we've got this you know crazy twisted extreme uh, world that's like all roundy like that? So, should we just Fill that in, maybe extend these shadows. That might be kind of a fun idea. Shadows don't add, right? So if this is in shadow and he's casting a shadow, it's more the Called the turn of the form. There we go. That's the million dollar word. Alright, do I want this shadow to cast on here? Maybe onto this tank? That'd be kind of fun. And I start to tie these elements together. Cast this shadow. far off. Should we put the, the gun on top there? You know? This guy be casting a shadow here. Oh, okay, maybe reestablish that turn of the form there. Yeah. 
and then reestablish that shadow because it's a hard shadow on top of a layering over a soft shadow, right? Uh, Should that be a different op type of object? Yeah, whatever. We'll keep it. All right. I'm going to need to take a, a sip of my tea to be happy. Let's get these to be not tangent, like this shadow and that shadow, I mean, because that will make them confusing. I do sometimes think, how can tangents be exploited for... For good rather than evil but um, tangents tend to just be very distracting they just pull your eye in and so we've kind of got a problem with a tangent right here with this that cannon we might actually be better served to um, take this thing and uh, move it you know, so if we, you know, you can hit Alt and then tap a point and then that makes it the new anchor point. Let's try that again. Alt, click, there we go. That makes it the new pivot point. You know, so we'll just give this a go. We're going to move that real quick and we'll do a new layer paint this out because part of what I've been doing and it, <clears throat> it adds to the quirkiness which I kind of like but I, you know it, it's it's pretty clear that I'm dancing around this is that uh, you got this curvature on top of the tank that I want to uh, carry around so that it meets up on the other side here like that right but I'm also fighting with this turret on top that I want to uh, I want to get the right angle of the cannon so that it's interesting you know what I mean like if we just right here, we'll put this on top if you take that out of the picture I don't like it pointing up like that. I want it pointing down, I think. Maybe draw that in so there's more extreme perspective on it. I don't want it to be too linear. But uh, anyway, you see what I'm saying? See how that uh, causes issues? No. If it's there, it's tangent with the top. If it's here, it's kind of lame. Boring looking. If it's pointing up, it just, I don't know, it just looks docile. It looks like it's not interested in, you know, it's like it's at rest. It's not going to, you're not shooting anybody. Oh boy, here we go. We just got ourselves demonetized. It's not at the ready. I'm not monetized anyway, just to be 100% up front about that, but 
I joke about that because uh, you say the wrong phrase and it's kind of like game over. <clears throat> okay. You know what? I hate this gun. I hate it. I don't know what to do with it. So we'll move on to something else. Can't fix that gun, but maybe we can fix all the other ones. got but I'm thinking there's more to life you know leave those silhouettes I do do kind of like that being like a, like the light is hitting just the very tops of them that might be kind of fun uh, zoom out and just think about this for a minute. When I zoom out, I want to extend this. That wasn't quite a minute, I know. Um, but the first thing I saw was just extending that line right there. I know I can't really quite see what I'm doing at this point. But I'm not too worried about that. Can you really mess up an image? Yes, yes you can. But, we're not too worried about that right now. What we want to do now is we want to figure out this image 
on a compositional level before we get into all the nonsense of rendering and I guess we did some rendering. Uh color. Come on, there's gotta be something left that I shouldn't have already started with. I think sometimes you gotta look at a painting at a high level like this and go, okay, what's going on? And how do I fix it? Or clarify, at least. How do I clarify what I'm seeing? Yeah, I don't know if that's any better with this guy. I think it may have made him worse. I think making that shadow thinner makes sense. All right, because that's background. The closer you get to the horizon, the more things kind of thin out. Uh, I think this... Yeah, something like that. Okay, let's zoom back in and see what mess we've made. And so we'll go off and on. So there's some clarity things down here, like this line work I like, but... Um, Compositionally, like where the lights and darks are, I think I've got to respect what we just did. Hmm, all this back here. I'm gonna flatten that out so that it lines up nicely with, uh, you yeah, know, the curvature. There is a certain, uh, Calligraphic um, quality to it that I don't want to lose. You get too uh, too tight and too noodly in it. It all kind of goes away. You want it to feel like it flows. As if you did nothing at all. You just drip some paint and it just went that way. It's almost like that's what some of those abstract people were after, you know? I'm not calling it brilliant. But 
it's like uh, the line between control and uh, this natural uh, natural flow of things. It's, it's interesting. Huh, okay. <clears throat> so we'll throw a few more things in here. We'll just kind of clean this up. Like blend it together, I mean. I think we'll go a little bit lighter on the horizon. Um, in the sky, I mean. Oh, so that's going to fade up. Maybe we need to throw throw some clouds in here. Again with the tangents, you gotta be careful. I I don't like that. I'm not, I don't like it. That's all I get to say about that. Maybe if we do a little wispy cloud. Again, this might be an area where we need to zoom out. And just get an idea of, okay, what is all this doing to the grand scheme of the image? Yeah. What could possibly go wrong with that level of analysis? Let's, let's zoom out. Have a look. Okay, I guess. Let's start to bring some color and clarity. So I'm going to start with a curve. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. 
and we're going to use curves to try to figure out um, do we want this to be uh, more of a high key, low key, high contrast? Where do we want these values to, to land? I like that we've got some really dark darks, like some black to reinforce some edges and a couple of shadows. Um, I like that there's a, a lot of light in the scene. However, finding that right midtone is going to be important. And so letting white be white. And then trying to figure out where does our midtone need to land for our uh, desired color. So I'm thinking somewhere in here, uh, I'm still not entirely sure what color I want the sandbar to be. You know, I think we're going to be doing just your typical blue sky, probably green on the shore for, you know, for the water. Um, sand, I'm thinking probably like a light uh, tan, but like pretty much gray going into like a gray, maybe a warm, warm gray. I have no idea what I want for the tanks. Maybe bright yellow. So let's start with, uh, we'll do a color balance and we'll just start getting ourselves kind of like in the ballpark. Uh, shadows. Uh, greens, highlights. Yeah, I don't know. I lean towards blue. I kind of like that more, but. Do you want that warmth in the light? I think we'll go back to our midtone and see about increasing the intensity here. Yeah, that's not not quite the way I want to do it. So I think we'll just end somewhere like that. Okay. That's simply duplicating it. That's fine. We'll go with that. And then let's go with multiply. I'm going to go with my light sandy color. Just to start filling this in get kind of aggressive with it okay then we're gonna go with our kind of our reds that we were talking about and this is where I have to be a little careful with this so I'm trying to use this multiply to get um, a little bit of value in here in this uh, light area because it's all white, there's no, you know, we're not changing color. We're, we've got to bring it down to a darker uh, base so that we can, we can deal with that. Um, <clears throat> but that's not necessarily what I want to do. here because this is already dark enough in fact we might I might omit that in my color balance here so if we go gray and we just jump up there same thing here gray 
Keep going. Here we go. Here. Jump. 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 No more. Yeah, it does bring the value up a little bit. We'll go to overlay, and this way we can have a little bit more control over whether we're lightening or darkening. So here, I'm gonna just bring in some of that rich orange. And I have a hunch that this is kind of where there's gonna be this band of contrast, the saturation here. I have a hunch that's that's the direction I'm going to want to go with this. Not entirely sure yet, but that's... It's calling to me. Okay, and I'm going to go more yellow. As we're in the light, I'm going to just start to fade that into that... Uh, into that orange there. Uh, we need in our multiply we're gonna get our teal ocean sea foam green blue whatever and start bringing that into our ocean here and then of course this is gonna have to have some omissions where it's you know, hitting the shore and it's, it's white. Do I want to bring that right up so that it mixes in the green? I wonder if I just go here, we take the blend if, we knock out the white. Uh, it might be, it might be too much. Yeah, it's, that's too much. Okay, I think that's a little cleaner. Um, let's grab some value here. Let's bring in, I guess, a new layer. We'll do... I guess multiply. We'll just pick like a bright yellow. And we'll bring these in for the tanks. I really don't know what I want these to be. I'm actually kind of tempted to do this as a um, color fill. And uh, And just be able to swap it around. We can, of course, do that. Um, we can do it this way and then just kind of change the way it's arranged. Which is what we'll do. Oh boy, now I've committed to something. The worst. But remind me, if I forget, remind me to, uh, to swap this to a color fill so that we can test to our heart's content different colors and values and whatnot I 
I'm telling you, Swan Lake, Swan Lake on the brain, it's still in there. Just playing on repeat. You are welcome for not sharing. Okay, we've done what we've done. So what we're going to do is we're going to control click that. Oh, we didn't even finish. What in the world? Come on. We got more to do here. All right, now we'll control click. Close enough, I guess. All right, so we'll go new solid color fill. Same color. Go to multiply. We could we could choose different, um, you know, uh, blend modes to accomplish this. But I'm pretty sure multiply is going to be the one we want because it's going to bring that that white value down. It's going to bring all the values down. But you know, our black can't get any blacker, and our midtones are well, they're light enough that they're not going to be too far thrown off though I will say because there's so much um, blue in them the color could potentially get you know could get weird like it goes green here right and so it's not exactly a true um, true uh, blend like, I would expect these actually to be more blue than they are. Excuse me. Yawning. Kind of like that. A little softer. What if we bring this below our other values, like our below our color balance here? Then we get less of that extreme green thing going on, you know? Let's back up. Back down. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like it. Okay, let us continue on. So now let's do let's do another overlay. I'm I'm tempted to bring this value down, but let's do another overlay and you know, get some light on these guys. You know, they've already got. Um, some pretty hard light, but I want to uh, push the form a little bit. Yeah, I don't know about that. The other thing too is that, you know, as they go off in the distance, the highlight shouldn't necessarily the highlight should is in relation to the the eye. Right? So it's the light bouncing off of the form, bouncing into the eye. So where it's placed in the scene actually kind of matters. So you don't wouldn't just place it, you know, right here at you know, whatever uh, that edges it kind of depends on where it ends up in the scene so things that are so we got this one here that's you know, on our left side of the scene it's bouncing into our eye um, as we get kind of farther to the right that highlight should kind of shift around the form more to our left if that makes any sense. No, Eric, you're not making any sense. In fact, you're kind of scaring me. Sorry. It is what it is.
Um, all right, so color, shadows, anything like that? What do we want to do? We want to bring in some lighter teals into the ocean here. All of a sudden, it's bioluminescent. What about, what about water on the horizon? What does that do? And I think it, our, obviously our light source is important. Like, increasing the intensity, obviously lightening it up, but also the saturation as it's going, uh, well, really anywhere, it's uh, implying that there's a light source behind it, which there's not. Um, but it so vibrant but it's got to be that way we love it well whatever Let's see, what do we need? Do we need some warmth here? I don't like that it's going yellow. Maybe let's go, maybe even blue. Just to, just to balance that out. Push it towards gray. Hmm, maybe go a little darker in some of these areas here. Nope. You know what I was saying a while ago about distrusting your intuition? What if we go lighter back there where I said let's go darker? What if that's what it really needs?
Hmm. 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 So this is okay, but I think I might just lower the effect. Because it is really changing the relationships of, uh, you know, of our, of our value shapes. Let's swap out this color fill. I kind of like what we've got going on there. I actually like that even more. But let's um, here. Let's uh, do this. I like these together. So what I'll do Please hold. Buffering. That's my brain. Buffering. Not the uh, channel. Um, I'll take all this. So first of all, duplicate that, hide it. Man, I don't even know. It just keeps getting better. All right, so let's just duplicate this, hide it. So we'll group that together. This is a uh, color, you know, just whatever. And then I'll go back to this one. And let's experiment with this. Try to find something completely different. Heck, these look look like they've been in the sea too long. As opposed to something that's more kind of it's like a navy, navy gray. You could kind of see a, a ship looking like that, you know. Let's save that one. Let's do another. Um, okay, do another. Okay, so we got ourselves a couple of options here. I like that one, because it preserves the light. This one, I think, you know, if you squint, it's got a nice graphic read. Uh, you lose all that inner detail, but it, um, it pulls all those shapes together. This one I don't really like, but I was going for some kind of a blue paint job that we could maybe um, bring in wherever we want. And then this one um, I'm mostly liking. I don't really care for 
Yeah, I think the I think the overlay is not helping it very much. So I do wonder if we move this above. Yeah, no. I don't like that. All right, so let's do this. Let's bring that mask down into here. We'll invert it, and then we'll adjust it. Curves. We'll bring that up so it, it gets some light, it, you know, inside the tanks, but not so much that it's like a real strong highlight. Uh, so that I could live with. I don't care for that. I think this kind of depends on if we want that in a certain region. And then that one is, that's okay, that's okay. Let's it compare these two. Okay, so what I'm thinking we do is this will just be like a base. And I might even lower the opacity on this a little. Wow. I do that, then Ooh, this guy kicks in that color balance. Can I move it above that? Yeah. Here we go. We have a little more fine tuned control over it. Yeah, so something like that. And then this color one, can we bring this above the color balance? This goes wonky a little bit. It gets that green in there if we bring this up above the color balance. So the color balance is helping this one out, which is too bad. Because what I'm thinking is that we can introduce this as a uh, as like these interesting paint jobs okay so like Maybe those are like, uh, this is like a mouth or something. I oh, will just do that for now.
look like an 80s headband. You know? Maybe we'll do the socks, too. Something like that. Oh, yeah. I forgot that this was already masked off. Here, I was trying to be careful and not, uh... Not go out of bounds here, but... Bounds have already been set. Look at that! Alright, let's, uh, we'll maybe make this whole... Cap on this thing one color. Anyway, I think you all know where this is going. We're going to um, we're gonna take this mask and we're going to apply it to uh, we're gonna invert it and apply it to our our dark layer. So we're gonna end up with that. Bright yellow. In here. Um. Uh, I don't think it needs that last one there. Hmm. 
Hmm. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a there's a horse toy in the other room that is decided to wake up and start making noises. Just so happens to be the room that my daughter is sleeping in. Sleeping in air quotes. The same one who really likes horses. We're just gonna give the benefit of the doubt and say that was probably just probably just like a toy she chose to take to bed rather than getting up and playing. But I suppose we'll find out soon enough. Mm, no, I did like, I don't know, I liked it with the, with those stripes in it. How about this guy? What are you going to have? You're going to be... Kind of like the angry eyes. I don't know. We shall decide. Anyway, we get this. We're going to do a uh, control click. Uh, I'm going to take this, group it, add that mask, and we're going to invert it. So... so that it is nice and bright in the scene high contrast if we shouldn't mask that out too. Well, all right, let's do, we'll do another overlay. And I'm kind of pushing the, pushing the values around a lot with overlay. But, um, I'm feeling lazy, so that's the way I'm going to do it. I feel like the correct thing to do here would be to come in with a, you know, a uh, mask or something, or a blend if uh, layer to this background, and um, then just actually select a color, you know, rather than sneaking up on it with uh, overlay. But this is what we're doing.
I think I'd like to take some of these some of these values like this and just do a we'll do a new layer and just paint them in. You know, I think we can get the waves working that way. Those seem to get brighter as they go back there. They're getting lost. Okay, um, I'm going to do a layer underneath that where I'm just going to clean up some of these edges. And the only reason I'm really going underneath is that I want to allow that to uh, allow those bright values to just bleed right through. seeing a couple of edges here that are they're just muddy muddy enough that I want them to be cleaned up and then I think back here probably will just push that back you know push it up in value so that it's not uh, so dark going into that background and then I think we need to just take a kind of a desaturated blue, maybe a little brighter silhouette for these 
these ships back there. And I'm gonna go a little darker, a little bluer, but then I'm gonna bring it in on this black here and push that one farther back. This could be pushed farther back, same here. There's a cleaner way to do that, which, uh, you know, I will actually uh, go ahead and do that. Be less lazy. And that's basically you do a, you can do a new layer. Um, this will set to lighten. Uh, we'll set our blend mode to lighten. And then we pick our value that we're saying this is our shadow value. And then we just paint over all the black with that. That is the cleaner way to do it. And uh, you can bring it in softly for things like this, where you know it's not quite in the background, but it's it's not our nearest item, so you kind of want to kind of want to push it back, go a little bit brighter, and we you know rinse and repeat. We're kind of just pushing all of this farther back. Um, we actually might set instead of lighten, we might do lighter color. Yeah, I think lighter colors, a little bit cleaner. It's gonna, it can sometimes give you weird edges, um, but generally speaking, I think, well, it's gonna do the trick for what we want it to do here. And we're going to see if we can use it here to push all of this farther back. Uh, okay, let's see. Clean that up a little bit. Might use it to push these black lines here into something lighter. Maybe, you know, we can grab a darker color and then introduce it there. You know, push those black lines back. These ones could get pushed back.
just curious if we could use that as a bounce light in here whether or not we'd even want to kind of blends that blends that one in too much so we'll bring that back I might bring in a like a rim light just for kicks. Just to see what it gets us. Sense I'll get you a cup of jack squat. Mm, there we go. Let's make that thinner. Yeah, that's not necessary there. Is it necessary here? I'm gonna say probably not. separate those. It definitely draws attention to uh, to this shape, which by the way is also oblong and bothering me. <clears throat> But 
why not? Let's draw attention to it. Let's name this rim. And we can give it some color in some of these areas. So it's not just white everywhere. or one hue wasn't really present in the image uh, much, so I wanted to clean that one out a little bit. Okay, and maybe I've been staring at this too long. Let's do a curves and a color balance and all that stuff to kind of give it Give it a different treatment. Maybe, maybe something like that. I do like it being brighter. You'll lose some of the fidelity in here. But, I don't know, maybe you can live with that. And or could simply uh, adjust that layer. Like I could see this. Um, if I invert this, and then I go bring that over to white, maybe give it a ramp, there we go, and then, um, well, you know, that just makes everything, uh, yeah, more glossy. I was thinking mainly this is the one that I want to want to keep because uh, I don't want to uh, accentuate that. Um. I suppose they did just come out of the water. They would be wet. This, maybe I'll go halfway on, something like that. And then let's go to uh, color balance. You know, I'm a sucker for adding magenta in the midtones. Let's see if I can if I can keep myself from doing it. What will we end up with? 
It looks good in the shadows, though. Yeah, I like that kind of white, white sands beach look. Zoom out. You know what? It's good enough for now. I think being that it's one in the morning and that I don't know what to do with this next at this current time. I mean, I can look at these and let's zoom in. I'll show you. If I look at these, I'm talking about some of the wonkiness that happens. Like that in there. You know, those are things that I could go through and fix. It wouldn't take too much, you know, like I think you could do either, you could do blend if, and you could select that, you know, that value range and then grab this color. Oh, you know, or you could do the opposite. You can bring, bring in the outside color. Um, you could even do darker color. So like if we did, if we could do that right now. So let's do darker color. We'll select this and just start painting that in there. And, you know, then we could clean up a lot of those edges. I don't really um, think it's worth it so much at this stage. Uh, some of these, some of those lighter colors I actually want in there. Um, but that does deal with kind of that halo effect, right? Um, so, you know, I could see maybe selectively bringing it back in a few areas like that. Okay. Um, so yeah, so other than like going back and just like fixing, you know, like looking at this and saying, well, you know, let's clarify this edge. Let's make that really crisp there and crisp here. You know, that's kind of tangent there. So we even talked about that earlier. Still, it's tangent, you know, so let's clean all this up you know so that would be this more like manual coming through and getting everything really squeaky clean um and i'm just gonna be frank i don't really have energy for that right now um so i have a hunch that this painting I will come back to. I kind of like it as it is, but I think I'd like it a whole lot more with some clean, um, you know, punchiness to it. Um, alas, I think this works. And like I said, I will just be, I would just be coming through and looking at, hey, what's bothering me? And then just clean that up. You know, I mean, it's exactly what I'm doing right now. I did tell somebody uh, a little while ago that, you know, painting is like that. It's like, um, the painting bothers you the whole time. You're just fixing things that you're dissatisfied with. And so it has this way of just being, you know, you're just looking at the painting like something's wrong the whole time until finally you've you've gone through it all and fixed it all and you don't have that feeling of you know this grieves me anymore and uh that might not be the best <laughs> outlook on you know painting or life but uh just to be frank that's kind of how that's kind of how it goes with some of these. So. But when you get to the end of it all, then you feel like, man, I am now happy with this. Nothing wrong with that. Let 
Maybe it's a little bit darker in these shadows here. Um, well, I guess now is the time to, to stop. I almost got myself talked back into painting, just finishing it off. Put another hour and a half in. But I've been, I've done that, been down that road. Tell you what, I prefer waking up rested than not rested the next day. So I need to stop. Okay, so let's have a look. Guess I can go full screen, zoom in, leave it there. So we got tanks emerging. The water. Storm in the beaches. In this case with little to no resistance. Maybe that's maybe that's something I gotta bring in. A little bit of action. Counteraction. Okay. Well that's it for tonight. I want to thank everybody for joining in, having a look. Dino Blaster, thanks for popping in the chat. Uh, I didn't see anything else in the chat going on. Sometimes I don't, it just doesn't show up, but no, it looks like that was it. All right, well, thanks for joining in tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is, uh, this whole concept is from Fantastic Tanks, which is, uh, an IP that I own, um, that I started, um, and I've got uh, some really talented guys working with me, Adam Barna and Tim Pascalis and uh, Joel Melindwa. And uh, you can check those out at fantastictanks.com. There you get little figurines uh, for that, um, miniatures. And uh, we've also got some larger 3D printed versions of them. And we actually have a new tank coming out very soon, which I'll be happy to announce. But I'm not going to spoil it, but stay tuned for that. Anyway, um, that's what this is all about. Thanks for coming in and checking it out. Hope you have a good night. All right. Take care. <laughs>